Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the old curiosity shop. I'm Scott. Can you guess where we are? I bet you can. I'm taking you over the Betsy Ross Bridge today. Now, I've got plenty of inventory, but uh, I'm looking for a few more special things to just beef up the uh, third live sale of the month. So why don't you help me? Now, in order for me to find those treasures, I'm going to need your help. So you keep your eyes peeled and watch those shelves. Do you feel up to it? Let's do it! Well, things better improve mighty fast. Mm-mm. No, no. Not with all the barkeeper's friend in the world. Bye-bye, Pyrex. Okay, I don't do anything with the spice of life. I see too much of that online, or there's, you know, there's quite a bit of it. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. I'm going to tell you about that out in the car. It's 450 and it was half off. Uh, gravy boat. You guys know the pattern? All right, put that in the cart. That green thing over there is not jade. I, I think I'll wave at it just to let you know it was nothing important. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about that gravy boat in just a minute. Mm-hmm. Now, looking through the clear glass, what do I see that's unusual? Aha! Sure does look like McKee Innovation. Now, McKee Innovation came out around 1911 or so, and it always has, uh, it's partially pressed and partially cut. And there were many different uh, patterns in the innovation family, so to speak. Uh, yeah, so that was nice. It was big. Uh, mm, I don't know about that thing. $15. I'm not over the moon about that. I believe I left the innovation piece on the shelf. Let's swing around here. Okay, modern dish. There's, uh, there's some nice made in Japan. That's either going to be Noritake. Well, if there are little glitches, my, uh, let's see, yeah, Noritake. My, my voiceover uh, software is being goofy here, and they were, they were blasting the music like it was a club. Okay, you know the wheat pattern is okay. I don't know. It just kind of. Ooh, now here's some. Uh, uh, blue onion, yeah? I think this might be English. Let's turn it upside down. Some blue onion. Okay, that's okay. Dishwasher safe. Well, we know that it's not that old, but... This was my first store, and I'm not trying to fill my truck up with a bunch of china. Not yet. Mm, swirl. Anchor hocking. Okay. It's alright. Let's keep shopping, though. Well, today isn't really starting off with firecrackers. All I came away with is my dumb little gravy boat. Now, I shouldn't say that, and I'm just playing. It's not a dumb little gravy boat. Let me tell you about this gravy boat. One of the first things that I ever learned from a friend subscriber was years ago when I started my channel. I used to run into this all of the time, and it's almost never marked. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a piece that's marked on the bottom and we'll pull off this price tag right here live on TV. I hope I'm not wrong. And yep, nothing. So a subscriber was watching and said, oh my goodness, that's my grandparents' wedding china. And it's called Mildred and it's made by Mount Clemens. Well, I've never forgotten that. And I don't know if my friend is still watching, this was years ago, but I would buy and ship her almost every piece I could find. So it, da it dates to the 20s. It's a pretty pattern and you will be able to memorize it, okay? Because it's really just absolutely never marked. Now you say, 
Okay, Scott, but you said you just don't pick up random china. Well, I don't, unless it's certain pieces, yeah? Now think about it. When you buy a dinner set, right, a dinner service, how many gravy boats do you get? And doesn't it always get broken or chipped? Yeah. So random plates and cups and saucers, I'm not a big fan of storing them, but I will pick up pieces like gravy boats, creams and sugars, um, the types of pieces that get used a lot and get broken. Now that I'm in a place where I've got storage, you see, I can go ahead and put this online as a buy it now price and it can sit there for two weeks or two years. But at some point, somebody is going to need a Mildred gravy boat. Next stop, right across the street, basically, a Goodwill. And I normally don't have much luck here. Uh, the first store was a Second Avenue thrift shop. Uh, where am I? Oh, somewhere in North Philly. But, uh, well, you know, this is here, so, and they've got a big Valentine to greet me. So, show me some love, Goodwill. Come on. Okay, prime example. Now, here is a Payton City set <clears throat> from either the late 30s or early 40s. There's a lot of it. But, you know, you would end up spending $50 if you bought all of it because they have it all priced separately in this particular store. Here are four berry bowls at $6.99. Some random plates back here. There's uh, cereal bowls, cups, well, I don't see any cups and saucers. Uh, there's a salt and pepper shaker and some other random things for $7. The only thing I would <clears throat> consider is, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, cream and sugar. Uh, one nice thing with the sugar bowl is we've got the lid, yeah? Lids are usually missing. It's a nice pattern. I don't remember the name of it, but it is paid in city. We can't see anything. Let's see. Uh, there might be a Payton City mark under there. Okay. The cream and the sugar, I would be paying $7 for those. The condition is good. We've got the lid. So that's a possibility. But that would be something, again, that's going to sit on the shelf in the eBay store with a buy it now price. Just waiting for somebody who needs that particular cream and sugar. Uh, okay, I'm gonna just leave it there and keep walking. I really doubt anybody's gonna come up behind me and grab that. The music in here is pretty loud, so if I'm running my mouth nonstop, it's because I'm trying to talk to you without doing voiceovers, and I gotta do it because of the music in the background. Here's more of this Payton City down here. It's really, <clears throat> I don't really like the way that this store prices, the one across the street, they would have had all the dishes together for like 19 bucks. I mean, you could have gotten like 60 pieces. This place, they break them up into these tiny little lots and uh, I don't particularly care for that type of marketing, but that's the way they do it. Let's see. Now they want $4 per soup bowl and you see that's the reason why these things are gonna sit on the shelf mm-hmm that's just what I have to say that's just what I have to say look at this this would be neat for Halloween what is it oh my goodness do you see what I see <gasps> okay they're ten dollars each and if there's no damage they're coming with me oh my goodness to find a pair in excellent condition Ah, 20 bucks for the pair. Just classic, like 1940s wacky lamps. Let me get these in the cart before I have a fit. They might have to, uh, they might have to call somebody to bring out a defibrillator. Detached retina. Oh my goodness. I think we've got two lamps here that are, now I wonder if the shades are around here somewhere. And you see that? I sat out there in my car and I poo-pooed this place because I normally don't do very well. And they annoyed me the way they priced all this paid in city stuff over here. I even found more plates over here at like $3 each per plate. Look, there's a whole stack right there and up there. Yeah, I know who this is, but I don't get into it. 
I leave it for other people. It's fine. It's just not my thing. Oh my goodness. Look at these lamps. <gasps> wow, look at this quirky little teapot. I've never seen anything like it before in this pattern. I don't know what, I mean, that's not really art deco. That's just like abstract kind of, I think it doesn't know what it wants to be. It's just all over the place. Yeah, okay, Laura Branigan, you had to blast Gloria right in the middle of my speech. Well, there's no mark on the bottom. I don't see any damage on it. I'm gonna look a little bit closer. It's $5, eh. Probably not a whole lot of profit in that, but it is unusual, and we do have random teapot collectors out there. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I'm still over the moon about these abstract mid-century lamps. Well, think about that teapot. Okay, now, Gl Laura Brannigan has done her thing, so I can calm down for just a minute. But they're gonna start playing music again. Let's go around the corner and see what's waiting. Oh, another teapot. Now this one is a little more common. It's lusterware, but... And let's see, that one's also $5. This one is probably, yeah, that one's German. Uh, that one is a little more common. A little more common than this one down here. That one seems to be really unusual. So do I want to jump on another teapot? I might. I might. Let me still think about that one. Wow, I've got to talk about this for a minute. It's only $45, and I think you know which piece of furniture I'm looking at. That's right, it's a twist on the traditional secretary desk, but this one is classic, 1930s. Look at the exotic veneer. Actually, that looks like some artificial graining on that veneer. Yeah, I think that's what we've got. Uh, they're trying to give it sort of a tiger stripe. Um, typical of cheaper furniture. Yeah, this is a this is a paint. Now, if you try to strip this, you're going to take all that artificial graining off. Okay, that's what it would look like without the paint. Just blah, some type of a hard fruit wood without much uh, interest. But when we turn it this way, we can see how it's been painted. And then it's got these nice um, deco handles. Um, so, again, but that one there has the look of the 30s. Mm-hmm. I like the artificial graining on there as well. Oh, well, there's the traditional one right there. Sometimes there's fretwork in the glass, and sometimes there is not. So, very colonial revival, and then very 1930s. It's kind of neat to see it, especially with... The uh, artificial graining there, that's all paint on that one. Okay, well, I'm at my Restore store now, and boy, there's some nice furniture in here. Uh, let me go see if I can find some nice old lampshades. Ooh! Well, in case I've not already done so, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I am so glad you're here. And uh, once we take a look at this uh, peach luster in the laurel pattern by Anchor Hocking. We'll move on. Uh, oh my word, how about those mid-century lamps? And we aren't finished, folks. Uh, those pieces right there were made in Mexico. We're going to discover an amazing bookcase coming up very shortly and some more terrific lamps. So I hope you'll continue watching. Just me pushing the cart along here. I always have to stop and look at these big-headed 70s things. Does anyone collect them? There has to be somebody that collects those things. <laughs> uh, you seem to going to tell you something else, and now I don't remember where my train of thought was headed. There's a doorknob. I don't need that. 
Uh, oh, 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 well, you know, I'm looking for things. Don't forget, this month I'm going to have a third live sale. That's right, a third, uh, because there's an extra Monday. Now, normally my live sales are the first and the third Monday of each month. And in January, you get an extra one. So here we are at a Goodwill store where everything is divided up by colors. That had a neat mid-century look. What's it say on the back? Just says Made in USA. If you're new to the old curiosity shop, you have to get accustomed to me walking past a lot of things that uh, wouldn't necessarily interest me. I sort of stick to the turn of the century uh, up into maybe the early 60s, but anything newer than that, I don't have much interest in. Boy, somebody murdered the price tag on the back of that. And I've already got one or two of the old Curiosity Shop plates uh, in that pattern. Now these are probably Depression, but there were only two, just two stems there, so I decided to leave those behind. Now as we turn the corner here, aha! Woo, take a look at that shelf. Can you guess which item I'm going to put my hands on? What's it going to be? All right, everybody, everybody look now. For Pete's sake. You knew that I was going to grab that 25th anniversary candle, right? Mm -mm. No, the swung vase. Well, that's a pretty one. We'll probably look at that out in the car again. Yeah. Nice marigold color there. Yeah, it's a typical marigold color, which is not unusual, but it's only $5, and there's no damage on it. Get the dirt out of the bottom. That's a nice piece. Let me take a uh, better look at it. Could be Northwood or somebody else. Ah, and of course, I had to pick up that Fred Astaire CD. You knew I had to do that. All right, perusing up and down the lamp aisle. See if we can find anything hot in the lamp department. That little brown jug there I've seen several times and I've looked at it, but it didn't really interest me. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to strike it big in the lamp department. Well, let's keep moving. Let's just keep moving. Reveal. Quick front seat review of that thrift store. It's always a great day when you can take Fred Astaire home with you. And I've probably got all this on LP somewhere. A lovely swing vase, swung vase. <laughs> and uh, with no damage on it at all, and it was $5. It's iridescent marigold, the most common color that you're going to find. Um, and it graduates uh well it goes from clear glass at the bottom up to the marigold at the top so still very pretty nice for the autumn season that's going to date to oh 1910 1912 and um you guys know the makers northwood so forth so forth i don't see any there could be uh an n under there for northwood but it really doesn't make a difference and i'm not going to peel that sticker off right now I think we're doing okay today. I'm still over the moon about those lamps. <sighs> well, you know I'm gonna pass on this piece, but I'm taking that, because that's from the 1940s era, and it's got uh, hand-painted details on it, and uh, I have some little tiny uh, uh, tomato juice glasses I think this would look nice with. So we're gonna put that in the cart. Got a surprise down there. I'll have to tell you about that when I get outside. Um, this is nice, but it's that second generation carnival glass, the 1960s stuff. I don't normally carry that. These are very common plates. Uh, that's either, I think that's Spoke or Madrid. I think it's Spoke because, oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, it's not spoken for. See the pattern in the middle? Isn't that called? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's it's no good, so we're going to leave it right there. Yeah, it's definitely no good with that. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. 
okay, Second Avenue, now this is how you do it. Go and teach goodwill across the street. This is how you do it. A full set, well, I won't say a full set, but notice everything matches and they keep it all together. Eleven ninety nine, twelve bucks for the set. There you go. You see, they didn't break it all up into weird little odd lots. They're keeping it together as they should. And this is a nice mid-century piece. I don't know who made it. But look, the price is right. It's cheap. And you're going to take all of it home with you. Way better than what Goodwill was doing across the street. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a different store. It's different management. It's a whole different company. And this is where I go to get large sets, because they do it right. Oh my goodness. Lamps. You're going to see these again later. Unbelievable. They're from the 30s. We're going to go from the bottom up. You've got old cloth. Look at the old silk cord there. Okay. And the old plug. Definitely from the 30s. That's going to have to be replaced. Look at the lovely brass bases, and we go up. Um, we're going to go up there and look at that, a nice autumn color. And we've got what's not really ormolu, but it is gilded, just metal, not bronze. Old sockets, and we've got finials at the top. There's no damage on these. A matching pair of beautiful 1930s table lamps. Over the moon. Over the moon! Well, it looks like I just bought myself an antique bookcase. I want everybody to hold your breath. Okay, you want to see the price? I won't keep you in suspense. Are you kidding? Did I say bought or stole? $69.99. That bookcase dates to about 19, somewhere between 1910 to as late as 1920. Unbelievable. It's got bun feet. So we may be right around 1920 on this because oak was still popular for bookcases. Yeah, I would put it later than, yeah, I'm very comfortable saying early 1920s now that I look at it a little bit more. Bun feet, it's on casters, three glass doors, adjustable shelves, tiger oak veneer. You see this on filing cabinets a lot. This is not hand carved. This is all pressed wood done in the factory, of course. Uh, but it's all original. I've got to do a little veneer repair right there, and that's about it. So I am very excited about it. Let me see if I can take a little bit of a look at the inside just to show you the quality of it. Um, isn't this beautiful? Now the shelves are adjustable, and I'm going to be able to, uh, of course, it's all one piece. And this is going to look wonderful in my uh, little library room at home. That was, uh, that's just amazing. And 69 bucks. This is a nice one here too. And this is old. This goes back to that era as well. And then here's one from, oh, I guess more like the early 30s. What a find, what a find. Almost all the lessons, almost every day. The campus fence is crowded with boys who sit inside. Until a certain party passes, then you hear them sigh. Oh, Doris, where do you live? Where do you live? Oh, Doris, mind your business. Oh, Doris, give us a tell. Where do you dwell? Oh, Doris. <laughs> Now I can tell before I pick that up that it is cut glass and I haven't touched it yet. Look at how that thing sparkles in the light. Yep, it's cut. Now let's get it down and hope it's not too much money or that it's too chipped. Oh, that is beautiful. That's cut glass. You don't get that brilliance out of the pressed. Wow, what a beautiful piece. $10? Okay, I think I can make a profit on that. Oh, that is wonderful. All right, let me uh, put it down in my cart and then I'll run my fingers over it and see, make sure it doesn't have any damage. Oh, it's cut all right. 
Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh my word. What's that? Now you say to me, and people say this all the time, I'm never gonna learn all of these depression glass patterns. I don't know how you do it. It's just practice. Now here's my advice. Get yourself a couple of good books. All right, anything written by Jean Florence or the Mozzies, you can't go wrong. Even go back to Miss Hazel Marie Weatherman if you can find her books. It's good stuff. Now when you're sitting on the Barca lounger in your polyester stretch pants, watching reruns of Matlack, just flip through the book. Look at the pictures. Do it night after night after night. And then when you go out sourcing or thrifting, whatever you call it. Yes, I'm talking to myself. Woo. Um, you'll see something on the shelf like that. And you'll go, aha, that looks like something. I think I've seen that before. You have seen it before. Well, you don't remember what it is, but if it's cheap and it doesn't have chips, go ahead and buy it. Then you bring it home and you find out it's a piece of uh, cascade in moonlight blue or midnight blue. I think it's moonlight blue uh, by Cambridge. Okay. So then you go on eBay like I do and let's put right here some comps. All right. Now, I'm not sure what's showing up there because I haven't done it yet. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to show you some of this glass that sold recently. Look at the prices. Look at the word sold in green. See that? Mm-hmm. Those are the prices that people are paying for this glass. Yeah. I'm going to show a couple of them to you right here. I hope so anyway. Not bad. All right. So if I see this in the thrift shop and it's 50 cents or a dollar or a dollar 50, um, okay, that's coming home with me. Now, you're going to make mistakes. I make them all the time, but that's how you learn. Okay, you buy something and it's no good, redonate it. All right, feed the cat out of it. Let the kids play with it. Uh, but you'll get better at it and you'll start memorizing patterns. But not only patterns, you'll start to get a feel. You know, a lot of times I say that has a Hazel Atlas feel. That has a Cambridge feel to it. It's a je ne sais quoi, yeah? You're not really sure. Um, and you just get better at it. Now stop all this Google reverse image search. No, I take that back. It's okay to do it. It's a tool in your toolbox, but don't rely on it. Now you say, Scott, you're just being too picky again about that. No, I'm not. Here's why I'm not being picky about it. I have got to make sure when I'm selling something that I give the right attribution to it. Because if I go online and say, this is a piece of uh, high Z glass in, I don't know, in the Kilimanjaro pattern. And that's what somebody said on Worth Point, or that's what somebody said on Google search. And it's wrong. Yeah. And I sell it. The winner gets it. And they say, uh-uh, that isn't what it is. Now, I've got to pay to have it shipped back to me, and it might get broken. So when you're buying and selling, you really have to know what you have. And so here's another example. Um, Tiffin Eldorado. Remember those plates I had? Yeah, a couple nights ago. The Tiffin Eldo Eldorado pattern looks a lot like the plates that Mrs. Harding had in the White House that's the Harding pattern, as people call it, and it wasn't made by Tiffin. Okay, so they look almost identical, and everybody was saying, oh, it's Tiffin Eldorado, and I thought it was too because I hadn't looked it up, but one person dug a little bit deeper and said, wait a minute, let me check that reference, and Patty was right. It was a pattern called, um, which uh, I forget whether it was Central Glass or one of the U.S. Glass, it might have been Central Glass, uh, they gave it a number, and then it was called, uh, but collectors call it the Harding pattern. It was used It was used by Mrs. Harding in the White House. Anyway, I'm going to show you those plates, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but Google reverse image search is, once again, not foolproof. Be careful with that um, when you're identifying, and uh, try to get, you can start there, but don't stop there. Dig a little deeper and get some more references. That's just to help 
buyers and sellers get together. Yeah. And listen, I'm telling you, I'm not saying it because I know it all. I don't know. No, I don't. And I mess up a lot. But so many times I've seen mistakes made if you simply rely on that Google image search. So there's all this other stuff in the truck. I'm going to show you a wonderful old mallard duck. He's an old one. Look at the way the flowers are. The grass is styled down there. And then um, cheers to the Second Avenue Thrift Shop. That's the way you sell a bunch of dishes. Now that Goodwill was actually forcing people to break up that set. And when I went back and counted it up, it wasn't $60. It would have been well over $100. And they just put, you know, a great big set wrapped it all up into different pieces it's not going to sell and hey second avenue thrift has the right idea when you have a set put it all together put a cheap price on it and it'll go they had 19 dollars on all of that beautiful uh glass that we saw to uh, china that we saw unlike all of that paid in city way overpriced all split up into weird lots and it's probably just going to sit there and eventually get broken what I think, but who cares? Okay, I'm just playing. Now, let's start the car. I think it's time for some lunch, and I've got about four more shops to go to. It's been a good day. And Well, I wish my friend Tammy were here. Tammy from Texas, because she likes Raggedy Ann and Andy. It's $30 for the pair. Now, when I look closely at the material... This looks like it has to be, these have to be at least 50 years old, wouldn't you say, Tammy, if you're watching? I'm trying to see if I can find a tag. Uh, you just see that this, whatever this fabric is, cotton linen, I don't know. They have bean bag inside of them. Those buttons look at least from the 1960s. Oh, they're... All right, it's $30. Let's turn them over and look at and see if there's any. I don't see any little tags on them anywhere. Maybe on the back of their necks. No. Somebody might have ripped it off. I don't know, Tammy. You're going to get mad. I'm going to leave them here. Actually, I will send her a picture. No, I don't see anything. Well, they appear to be... Uh, uh, factory made and I would say they are at least as old as I am and it's $30 for those two little guys well guy and girl I don't normally look at to uh, toys some noise makers This is another area I don't know anything about. These old Fisher Price things. I know people go nuts over these old toys and even toys that aren't so old. There's Annie, but it's just something that I don't really get into that much. Here's one in its box, the original Raggedy Andy doll. For eight dollar. Oh, here's two in their boxes. Oh, that one is kind of dirty. There's a price tag on it. J.M. Fields, three dollars and eighty nine cents when it was new. All right, let's look and see if there's a date. This looks like it might be from the sixties. Well, it says made in Taiwan. Maybe it's the 70s. Oh, wait a minute, here we go. No, something toy company. I don't see any date on it. Well, maybe it's not as old as I, maybe it's from the 70s. That box, box doesn't particularly look there's the Pink Panther game. Yeah, I am just not, I don't know about this stuff. Well, anyway, 
Okay. Now, player piano rolls. That's my speed. What else have we got here? What are these? They look Italian. Uh, yeah. He's blowing some flute and he's trying to attract her attention. She's going to dump that fruit bowl on your head. What is this thing? 1930s. Who? Ah, oh, look at that thing. No, he must have had a hat. Nora who? 1930s Nora Nellings? I don't know what that is. But he's either, he's kind of a little scary looking. I don't know what he is. Oh, I like this. Here's the man of La Mancha, I think. Oh gosh, there's a heavy cast iron spittoon, L and N. L and N. Oh, what's this thing? He has a, like a porcelain head, but his costume doesn't look old. What does it say? Slack man, baby doll? I don't know. I really don't, but he's funny looking. And these things, yeah, I, I know, I know. Can't get into it. Look at these player piano rolls. I'll look at them off camera. You don't want me to do that here. Uh, okay, there it is. The Georgian pattern and I don't know which two or three or four companies made that. There's some depression glass down there and a 1930s clock, some Capita Monte, and uh-huh, uh-huh. Why does that say eBay $25? Don't tell me this store has started doing that. Oh well. Oh, this is fun. Well, I didn't buy the Raggedy Ann. Wait a minute. What did I do? Oh, here it is. Um, I did not buy the Raggedy Ann and Andy or any of the other toys. I really just don't know enough about those. And I don't know a whole lot about oil cans. But some of them are worth money and some of them aren't. I paid $4 for this one and I didn't look it up on the internet. I could have. I didn't have time. I just know that that top is something that you would see, you know, like pr I think prior to the prior to World War One, and it is automobile oil. It's not, you know, it's not a brand name that anyone would know today. And it, but the can is in good shape. Um, it's got to be worth four bucks, and if it's only worth four bucks, and I can't get any more than that, <clears throat> then I'll stick it in my basement. Okay, and then I got. And this also has to be probably from the 40s. I already have one of these cans, uh, Maxwell House cans at home, but I haven't ever been able to find one with its lid. There's its lid. Um, so, yeah. You know, you would twist the thing and pull the metal off. And so um, I'm happy to have a lid. Now this one, you know, I don't know, somewhere from 1945 to 1965, I guess. So that I'll probably keep. And the one that I've got at home that doesn't have a lid, I might get rid of that. And we'll see later on if this uh, penetrating super lubricant is any good. Manufactured in New York, Chicago, and Minneapolis. Cabots. And it, yeah. So two tins. And uh, a couple more shops to go to. How about that bookcase? Oh, I know. I couldn't get it today because it's raining. So I've got to drive all the way back there tomorrow to pick it up. But that's okay. $69. Start the car! Driving on the campus. We know you don't really mean to vamp us. 
But, oh, Doris, <laughs> do this favor for us. Tell us, Doris, where do you live? 